Welcome to this tutorial. What we're going to do today is replicate this plot here, which shows the rising levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide, which have been recorded in the same location for over 50 years. And we're going to replicate this plot using the data that I want to actually use to create it. So we're here on a NOAA website, which is an American agency, and they collect huge amounts of data from around the world. And we're going to access this raw data by scrolling down through this web page until we hit the subheading named data. We're going to work with monthly mean data. And all you have to do is click it, bring the protect file, which contains all of the data which has been collected from that particular site. And we're going to get this into Microsoft Excel and we're going to work to convert that data into a plot that looks very similar to the one that we saw on the preceding page. So we're just going to select all of the data in here just by right clicking and then clicking select all. It selects all of our data highlighted by the blue, right click and copy. We'll now open up Excel and then we're going to create a blank workbook. So the first step we've got to do is get this data into a workable format so that we can then start to plot the graph, manipulate it however we will. So we'll right click in here and then we'll click paste. Okay. So our data is now in Excel. But those of you uh, eagle-eyed will notice that if we select one of the words of our data, you see that it's just one long string of text. We can't really work with it. We can't display that. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert our data into columns. And we're going to use a particular wizard in Excel to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is just select the A column which is all of the data that we've just pasted. I'm going to click Data in the Data tab at the top of the Excel window, and I'm going to use the tool Text to Columns. Click that, it brings up a really simple wizard. At the bottom, we have a little bit of a preview. So if we scroll down until we can see some of our data, we see at the moment it's still in this one single column. It's not been broken up. But we're going to use a file, a file type to describe it as the delimited. So we know that these are separated by spaces. And that's what we're going to use to delimit our data. So we click Next. The delimiter, we're going to deselect tab. And we're going to select comma, space, sorry. And we can see now that our data has now become in the column format. Click Finish. OK. You can also see that the notes that in the above have all been changed now. But we're not too interested in that. But I recommend that you read them because it will tell you some metadata about how the data was treated and so on. It's important that you understand that when you're going to plot it and make any assumptions from the data. I'm going to delete the first 70 rows so that we have a bit of a cleaner data set to work with that we can start to format and so on. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a new column in, a new row, sorry, in above, and we're going to start to break down what these actually are. So it's difficult to tell, but if we look at the original source, we can assume that the first ones are years, months, it's a decimal date field, we've got average CO2, interpolated CO2, a trend, and then something about days. But we're not interested in that. The two columns we are interested in are interpolated and trend. I'll take you through that right in a minute. So first and next day, let's add in our column heading. So the first one is year, followed by month, followed by decimal date. This is average CO2. This is interpolated CO2. This is trend CO2. And this is days. We delete the remaining two rows above. And I'm just going to select my columns and then move it to the gap between the two columns and then just make it a little bit bigger so I can read what these are. Okay. So we now have our data in a format that we can work with and we can plot. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new date field that will allow Excel to properly present the x-axis of the data of the example graph. At the moment if we were to do it with any of these columns it wouldn't really make sense. So we're just going to right click on a column. I'm just using C here because it's near the data where I want to 
consolidate to create a new field. I'm going to call my field date and I'm going to use the date function in Excel to create a new Excel formatted date. I'm going to use equal and I'm going to type date. Okay, and you can see that hopefully it comes up with a little prompt that we can just double click and we can start to throw a little prompt. So date, first field is year, so I'm going to collect the value in its cell A2. The next one is month after the comma. I'm going to select the value in B2. And now I'm just going to put one, the number one. We're just assuming that it was collected on the first day of the month, but that's not important to us. What's important is being able to format the date so that we can make sure it displays correctly on the x-axis of our graph. I'm going to close this by putting a closing bracket on and you can see that the little prompt underneath goes away and press enter. And you can see now that we have 1st of March 1958 and we can see that in that date it's been adequately represented. All I'm going to do now is format it. All I want is the year 1958. That's all I want. I'm going to format it by right clicking. I'm going to go to the prompt format cells and now I'm going to make it display only the year. If you look in the categories, we've got date, we can scroll down. It doesn't give us an option just to display the year. We need to use a custom type to make that happen. And we go to category, custom, and then I'm going to modify this one by deleting the first few parts. Okay, the preview here shows 1958 only. Click OK. Essentially what we want. So now we're going to copy that value to all of our, all of our words. And there's many ways to do this. The easiest way is just to simply hover over the little square in the corner until your cursor changes to the black crosshair and double click. And it will copy that value all the way down. You can double check to make sure it's working by looking at the transition between years. And it's working fine. And if we scroll all the way down to the bottom of our data, you can see that it's right there. 2015, there's our column. 691 data entries minus the first row. Okay, so really good. So that's all good. So what we're going to do now is start to create our graph. So in uh, the Internet Explorer web page, so if we go up here, that's our example graph that we're going to replicate. And we're going to copy these axes and we're going to plot our data in a very similar manner. So we're going to add a graph into our Excel program now. And we do that by going insert. We have these recommended chart types. I just made it a little bit larger. So more things pop out. And you can see our recommended chart types. And we're going to insert a line type, a 2D line, and the first option here. We just want the lines. We don't want any markers. We just want to show the line. So we'll click that particular plot. And you see that Excel has very helpfully added this automatically generated plot that contains tons and tons of data. What we want to do is just show two series of data with the year on the x-axis. So we're going to modify the auto-generated chart. And we're going to do that by using this option here, Select Data, which is in the Chart Tool Design tab, if it doesn't show automatically. So you click Select Data. We're going to modify the series, which are the lines on the graph. We only want in here interpolated CO2 and trend CO2. So we'll click remove decimal date, we'll remove the average, we'll remove the days. Okay, and you can see behind this field here that the plot has started to take shape. We also want to only point towards our new date field in our category label. And we're going to just select this little prompt here to bring up a selection and we're just going to select all of the year column that we generated earlier and then click OK and OK again on the prompt we scroll up to the top so now you can see we've got the bare bones of a chart starting to appear we've got two series of data and they're different colors and so on, the axes are all strange. This is an automatically generated Excel chart. So we want to make sure that we format it to match what we really want. Now, some of you may be wondering why I chose to use the interpolated CO2 over the average CO2. If you look at the average CO2, you see that there's a minus 99.99 flag. That indicates that there's missing data for that month. 
and that came up several times. You may have seen in the auto plot that there was a massive drop off coming off where they'd been missing data. And if you read the header file, it tells you the reason why and what they did to interpolate between these to give you a value that you could have a continuous data set. So, we're going to start modifying the chart now. Now, very quickly, we're just going to delete the legend here. We're going to delete the chart title. We're now got a lot more space in here. So the first axis we're going to work on is the y-axis, which is the amount of CO2 in parts per million. If we look at the original plot, we see that they truncated our axis from 310 to 410. Our automatically generated plot starts at zero, finishes at 450. So it's quite conservative. What we're going to do is change that. Simply by selecting it, you see that we've got a grey box coming up around it. Double click, we'll bring up some options on the right hand side of your screen. And now we're going to start to modify this. So it brings you automatically up axis options, this little graph here that contains all of these extra options that we're going to work with. So the first thing we're going to do is change our bounds. 310 with the bottom bound and 410 with the top bound. We see now that we've got a plot which is starting to take shape. The axis here is broken down into decades. And every 20 years, jump with the label. So our major units are 20. Our minor units are 10. And you can see now that we've got 410, 310, 330, 350, 370, 390. We're kind of happy with that. We're going to add in some tip marks, like here. And our major tip marks are going to be inside. Our minor tick marks are going to be inside as well. So you can see now we've got our tick marks showing. If I just deselect it, you see that our actual axis is this blue colour. So we want to format that to change it to black. And we do that by back in the format axis options. There's a little paint bucket. We want to change the line to black. Now if we go back, deselect it again, we can start to see that that's now black. Okay. So we've got our first axis is sorted. So we're going to format our second axis now, the X axis, which is year. If we go back to this, we see that the minor ticks are every five years, and we've got a decadal number coming up on that axis. So we're going to select our Y axis. We're going to change from our line tab back to axis options. We're going to drop down axis options and you see that there's a little bit more happening in here because we formatted it using the Excel date function. So we're going to change our units now from months to days. And our axis is every 10 years. Uh, sorry, months to years. Every 10 years. And our minor is every 5 years. Okay. So we can see now that we've got this, that is take shape on that axis there. So just select it again. Go back to the axis options and now tick marks. We we'll create some tick marks to drop down. Again, on the inside, you can see that our line is again kind of a grey colour now. So we're going to go back into our axis options. We're going to go to the fill and line. We're going to change our solid line colour to black to match. Okay. Just increase the size of our plot so we can see it a bit better. So now we're going to work on our series. So the first series we're going to work on is the interpolated CO2. If I just select that, you can see in the example plot it's red. In our plot it's grey and it's quite fat so it's difficult to see what's going on. It's going to simply change the colour to red and I'm going to change the width of the line to one point. Okay. And you can get to this by using the paint bucket and the line option. So that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So the next thing we're going to work on is the black line. And this example plot. And which is represented as this orangey yellow line in our plot. So if you selected the orangey yellow line, you can see we've got this here. It's orangey yellow colour. We're going to change that to black. And we're going to change the line thickness to one point. And there we go. We've now got our plot 
looking so much similar to the plot on the NOAA web page. Okay. So the next option that we need to work on is to add in our access titles. And we do that in a slightly different way. First, make sure you've selected your graph. We're going to add a chart element. In here, there is a ton of options of various things to add. And we want to add access titles. Primary horizontal, access titles, primary vertical. Okay. So we're going to use a slightly different axis title on our vertical axis or the y axis. I'm going to write atmospheric C02 and in bracket ppm. I need to subscript the two. There's no easy way to do that from here, but if you just right click after you've selected it, click font, then you have an option here of subscript. You can also see script if you required for variable numbers and so on. Click OK. So we've now subscript that number. I'm going to go to axis title on the, the x axis and we're going to write year. Okay. So we're nearly done. There's just two things we need to do. One is that the fonts here are in this grey colour. So I'm going to change these to make them black. black. And you may choose that you want to make your title slightly larger than your labels. And I'm just going to change my labels as well. You do this in a slightly different way by using the from axis options of the side. So here we've got an extra option, text options, in the format axis. And our text fill, started fill, black. And there you go. The final thing we'll do is just remove these horizontal grid lines. We now have a professional looking plot which we can put into an assignment. I hope that's been helpful for you. Thanks for watching.